All right, let's talk about what the Pittsburgh Steelers need to address here on day two of the 2022 NFL Draft. Now, we know we got Kenny Pickett yesterday with the 20th overall pick. That leaves a lot of holes on this team that need to be filled out very quickly. I would like to add some wide receiver depth. I'm okay with the wide receiver group we have currently, just Deontay Johnson, Chase Claypool, and Anthony Miller projected to be your starters. We also recently added Miles Boykin. I'm okay with that group. I'm not happy. I would like to upgrade over Anthony Miller but I'm willing to accept that because we do have needs at other positions currently. I would like to add some depth at uh, add some linebacker because right now we've got TJ Watt, Alex Highsmith, and after that, I mean, it's we got Jannard Avery from Philadelphia. I'm not really high on his prospects, so I would like to add some depth there because we saw last year when TJ Watt gets hurt, everything kind of defense stopped operating at a high level. Let's just put it that way. And chances are with the way TJ Watt's been throughout his career, he'll miss one or two games this year. So I really think we need to have some depth there in case of an emergency situation where we could have a guy who might have to start two or three games in place of T.J. Watt this year. So I'd like to have a guy, a third outside linebacker, other than Jannard Avery, someone not named Jannard Avery, who I feel a little more confident in playing that role. And luckily this is a very deep edge class, so maybe we can get a uh, Amaji Sanders or someone like that to play this role. Uh, I would also look at cornerback help as well. We brought back Akilah Witherspoon to be our slot corner. We have Cameron Sutton playing out wide, which is something I still don't love. I didn't love moving him outside last year. I don't love it right now. I brought Levi Wallace in from Buffalo, but he was more of a scheme-specific type cornerback who really was solid in – not great in Buffalo, but solid in Buffalo because of the pieces around him. So I'm a little concerned now he's going to a secondary Pittsburgh that was clearly not on par with what he had in Buffalo. I'm a little concerned about how he'll transition. I would like to add some at least – long-term projects in the cornerback room, someone we can at least count on for depth at the very least. Uh, but someone who has maybe a long-term upside, I would love to have that. At safety, of course, Terrell Edmonds is only under contract for one more year. Uh, we have Mike Fitzpatrick there as well. He's going to need a contract extension. I don't know what you want to do there. You could do nothing there. I wouldn't be shocked if you don't. But this is a, I would say, fairly deep safety class as well. So if you go with someone to replace Terrell Edmonds long-term, uh, that wouldn't shock me. Trey Norwood's also on the roster. He's a bit of a slot slash um, a slot corner slash potential safety prospect in the long run. We'll see. Uh, I like Trey Norwood a lot, actually, though. I, I do hope we see more snaps from him this year because he could be a very versatile defensive back for us. Other than that, looking around this roster, the only other spots I would really attack would be the offensive line. You can defend Dan Moore Jr. all you want as a rookie fourth-round pick last year. There was a reason he was available in the fourth round, and it's because he ended up beat, leading, he ended up finishing seventh in the NFL in pressures allowed this past year and tenth in sacks allowed among all tackles. So he was available in the fourth round for a reason. And, you know, tackle play is not great in the NFL right now, uh, but certainly it's not really good in Pittsburgh either. So that's a problem. You brought back a quarter four. He's going to be a star for long term because you paid him a lot of money, so that's going to have to happen no matter what. Uh, you signed Mason Cole at center. Uh, he was just a really a, a backup caliber player in Minnesota who got some starts, but really performed poorly on those starts this past year. So I, I wouldn't be happy with the way the center spots worked out either. Kendrick Green's still on the roster. I feel very comfortable with James Daniel and Kevin Dotson. At guard. Both our guard spots are set, in my opinion. But I'd still like to see at least someone brought into that tackle room. I know we got Joe Hay as a backup, but I'd like to see someone else brought into the tackle room. I'd like to see someone else brought in who maybe as a, as a, like a long-term option could play center somewhere along the line. Uh, maybe even like a third guard who could play center slash guard. I don't know if that would even make sense, uh, but I don't know. I, I just, I'm not comfortable with the offensive line. At this point, I don't know if there's any picks that would actually upgrade the line in general. Uh, maybe Abraham Lucas, per se, to play. Well, he's a right tackle, though, so it wouldn't really make sense. Uh, yeah, I'm just not happy with the offensive line. <laughs> I'll just be honest with you. I think putting... We saw, we saw happen with Najee this year when we put him behind the offensive line. He was hit behind the line of scrimmage so often. It was ridiculous. And putting someone like Kenny Pickett back there, who well, has such a long time to throw, will make it just even worse. So uh, hopefully we can do something about the offensive line, but with all the money they spent up there this offseason, I wouldn't anticipate it. But yeah, anywhere along the offensive line, I'd be happy. A third receiver is someone I would like. An outside linebacker just for depth. I wouldn't be shocked if you go after a cornerback. And frankly, I would take a starting outside cornerback, even if it means moving one of these guys to a backer role. I'd be fine with that. And safety as well as probably in our area they're going to look at. And depending on how you evaluate Devin Bush, maybe even inside linebacker, because this is a very deep linebacker class as well. Uh, so we'll see how day two of the NFL draft plays out. But those are the pieces I'm looking for to add to the Pittsburgh Steelers before the end of this draft.